No need for a long introduction today. Welcome to City Skylines 2. And as you navigate your way through, here are some of my tips and tricks in this wonderful, if not turbulent, city builder. We're going to start with a feature that I think is often overlooked in City Skylines 2, and that's found down the bottom here, these areas, used to define both the very valuable specialized industries and also districts. You'll see here I've created a district called Bliss, and you can create your own by simply drawing it out with this tool. It works pretty easy, and maybe in the same way that you might have zoned something like the site where a landfill can dump its rubbish, simply place the nodes down like so, and zone off an area of your city, in this case, Brook Corner. Once you've created a district, you can double click on its name and jump into the policy screen. And this is where our real change will happen. This case, probably it'll help you make a bit of extra money if you need to in City Skylines 2. You could choose to ban combustion engines if your citizens are complaining about noise and air pollution. Likewise, policies around gated communities, education, electricity. Well, hopefully the education one will come at some point. But as you can see, there's a huge variety of stuff here. If you're struggling with garbage like I am, maybe recycling will be the thing for you. But the real tip actually comes here with roadside parking. People love to park on the road in City Skylines too, whether they're living in a high density building on the left or a low density suburb to the right, and you can make money out of them. The roadside parking fee can be adjusted up to, to be fair, quite an extraordinary length. This will both, of course, potentially make you extra money or reduce demand for cars on your roads. In my experience in City Skylines 2, this is basically just a cash grab, at least in the current build, tending to favour money making over reducing demand. Although, of course, that is subject to change depending on how they patch the game moving forward. And if charging people an exuberant fee to park in your city wasn't quite enough, don't forget you can navigate down here to the City Information tab. Not only will you get some maybe slightly useful insights, although somewhat vague, into the different demand areas, but also if you swap to city policies, you can instigate some policies citywide. No need to produce individual districts. Here, anything's on the table, though the options, as you can see, somewhat limited. If that's the case and your 38 million is slowly falling away, you could also jump to the city economy tab over here. Here you'll see a nice breakdown of the city budget, where your money is going and where you're raising it from. Don't forget that these government subsidies are essentially just free money in City Skylines 2 and will probably net you a lot of cash. So make sure you pay attention to exactly how they're operating over on the right hand side there. Taxes can be raised or adjusted and here I would note, and this will come important later on in the video, that they are varied at least in residential terms based on education rather than any other metric. You could choose to target specific industries if you want to quash them or alternatively raise taxes across the board to increase funds. Take care though, because just as in real life, these changes take time. Interest rates go up, people's repayments are refixed slowly over time, and eventually they can't afford it. So they have to move out, sell their house, and find a city that's a bit cheaper than yours. Uh, keep that in mind when you're raising taxes. I'd suggest raising them slowly, though you may not need to at all. When you're starting a new city, right at the beginning of the game, there are two things that I want to highlight for you here more than anything else. Of course, the first one may be slightly obvious. You should really take a look at the climate. This will determine whether, for example, your city will experience snow. Naturally, of course, these resources will also have an impact on the kind of specialized industry you can produce without them needing to import their primary good. And if you want a connection straight to the sea, which may be more relevant when the eventual ports DLC comes out, then maybe something like Mountain Village isn't quite for you either. When you're laying these foundations in a picturesque, potentially new city, you should take a couple of things into account. Firstly, you should try and keep your industry separate as much as possible. So in this case, I wouldn't put industry here and then residential across the road. That would be a recipe for disaster for these people, poor sods living across the road from noise, air and potentially ground pollution. And so a quick tip for planning the very beginning, Maybe you should jump into something like the electricity screen. Select a wind turbine can be a good option for some early power generation and check what way the wind is blowing. You'll want to make sure that your industry is downwind from where your residents are because otherwise even a more careful planning than something like this could result 
and a whole load of pollution blowing right into your poor residents' faces. When you're planning new zones, I would encourage you not to just use the fill tool, blindly filling every slot you can with the color that you choose. Instead, I'd encourage you to be a bit more precise. Now this could happen both down here under the theme, whether you want North American or European, of course, sometimes selected from the very beginning of the game, but as you can see, it will vary the options. Perhaps more importantly though, it'll be the paint tool or the marquee tool that will allow you to place more specific residential, commercial, industrial zones, and that will determine the size of the property. Here, for example, using office zoning as my case study, I've put four up here, nine down here, and then a full section with a little bit of extra on the side. Sections can be four across and four deep at their maximum, but by building them a bit smaller, you'll encourage a different style of building, a different height of building, and unlock extra areas in between where you can build pathways or trees. And this here is a wonderful example. Here you can see a 4x4 plot for high density offices, and here a 2x2. The look and feel that they create will drastically change your city. As you can see, in terms of their size, their footprint, everything changes. So use this to your advantage to get the kinds of heights of buildings that you want or styles. Back to the economy of your city. Don't forget that there are import and export routes that are very useful to you here. The reason why we're looking at my power plant is because power might just be one of the most useful and certainly one of the first ones that you'll run into. As you move through the progression tree down the bottom left and unlock more and more things, of course, you'll have more options available, like the solar power plant, for example. But in terms of early game production, and if you're looking to export, I would highly, highly recommend, at least in this current build of City Skylines, the coal power plant. The coal power plant, very efficient, produces a lot of goods. You might even have some coal that you can specialize in industry around to supply it. The geothermal power plant unlocked, to be fair, relatively early on in the piece in the progression tree. It's fairly cheap, I think costing only two development points, is also, in my experience, another pretty good option. Though, to be fair, you can't really go wrong no matter how you generate it. It's a great export, and as your city grows and needs more, you'll have that capacity to fulfill their needs. On the topic of an ever surmounting rubbish problem that will apparently be fixed in a future update and city service buildings, let's talk a little bit about the development tree and how you progress through it. You can find it down the bottom here at the moment. This city is a huge city, but of course, I haven't quite unlocked everything. I'm going to need to progress a little bit further to spend my development points that I get each level to grab everything that I might need. As you can see, your city produces experience, population increases, city happiness increases, and many other things. So growing a city naturally and progressively will be the best way to do this. But if you're a little bit impatient like me, there are a few things that you could choose to do. Uh, the first one located here there is signature buildings. Some of these, of course, will provide wonderful aesthetics, others won't. But what they will do is provide an extraordinary amount of experience, in this case, 500 now, when it comes to city service buildings, and let's use this down here, the elementary school as an example, you can see it's going to provide me with 300 experience in this case, costing 100,000 bucks. Placing it down did indeed remove 100,000, reducing me to 41.5 million instead of 41.6. Woe is me. With these city service buildings, however, you'll note that I can be refunded. At the moment, in this build of City Skylines 2, again, it could change in future if you're watching this far off, we receive a 75% refund. So I spent 100k, I'm getting 75k back. Now, do I recommend this for a growing city with many needs as we fly through here in build mode, not even in photo mode? Well, not necessarily, of course. You're going to waste a bit of cash. But if you're looking to generate fast city progression, that could just be the way to do it. If congested city streets are a problem for you, of course you might look to use public transport. Again, unlocked by developing our city. You'll have a variety of different options on offer, and of course these will ultimately reduce traffic. Though it's important that you plan the routes right and include the right number of stops. Don't go too overboard here. You could choose to start nice and easy, and in fact you will if your city's not very big with the bus depot or taxis. Of course, subways and trams will require a little bit more advanced planning. 
Make sure you upgrade these services as and where is needed as well. Important to note, and perhaps I should have noted it earlier, that these upgrades, like the extra garage, will also provide me, bam, with a little bit of extra experience. So you can also use this to level yourself up. Using the buses as our example though, we will of course need some places for people to shelter, these acting essentially as our nodes. Take care when you're placing them, obviously not too close to the shelter here, but make sure that you place them on the right side of the road, perhaps near pedestrian pathways and other areas of interest. That way people will actually be able to use them efficiently. You might like to stop along main routes like I am here, potentially bring people to their places of work, like an industrial zone, maybe there, or maybe bring them to a place of education. Ultimately, of course, it's up to you how you design these routes, where you want your people to stop. Make sure that you have fairly good coverage of employment and services across your city, and you should be okay. Then navigate to your line tool, choose the place you want to start, and much like how we draw out everything else in City Skylines 2, move around and place your waypoints down. A couple of quickies but good tips. If you are maybe offended by the radio or you simply find it offensive because it's annoying, click into the player down the bottom here. This will open up a new menu for you where you could choose to change stations if you wish or down the bottom here, disable ads. That will hopefully bring you a little bit more peace of mind as you're creating your cities if you find them a bit frustrating. Chirper, your little city tweet bot that does report sometimes on some quite useful things to steer you in a direction is a little bit more difficult to silence here. As you can see, you'll have to jump into the options and then interface menu where you can disable Chirper pop-ups along with a variety of other things. If, for example, you're using the proper metrics like Celsius and metric meters, then you'll be right at home here with these settings too. Uh, for full clarity, that's just a joke, you do you, king. And if you're looking to capture some sweet and customized aesthetics for your city, maybe a new island that you've built with an obnoxious looking tower in the middle, well, if you haven't disabled day-night settings in the beginning, there aren't many ways to do it, though we will cover one at the end of the video. So that might be out of the question until photo mode arrives. If you're looking to capture good shots of your city, photo mode is for you. You can click here in the middle down the bottom to disable the UI, getting rid of it completely, so you can capture some really nice screenshots. The customization options don't end there, as you can see, sensor type, ISO, shutter speed, and that's all inside of camera. Lens, color, weather, and environment are all subject to change, so have a play around. My one tip would be that the time of day is by far and away I believe, the easiest setting to change to get a much better look at your city. I mean, take a look at that. By simply clicking that button, this island looks so much better. Here you can change the time. So if I bring it back to 12, it's a bit brighter. Cool, cool, cool. What if I reduce it down to 1 a.m.? Well, things look a bit different again. You can customize the look and feel here and capture some truly gorgeous shots, providing your PC can keep up. All of these city services are important. We've discussed many reasons why for your economy, the importing and exporting resources, whatever it may be, they play a very crucial role. I'd like to highlight this one in particular though, edumacation. Education is very important in City Skylines too, and here you can see we're not quite meeting demand in this city for elementary schools. The first layer in producing this educational structure Accessibility and other things will also factor in here, so it's not quite just as simple as placing down the services. You have to make sure that people are actually able to get to them. And of course, bear in mind that there's a little bit of a latency effect here involved too. Students will need to enroll and make their way to school, for example. Education will impact the opportunities for your citizens. While things like age affect citizen health, education level focuses on wages and also garbage production. Higher education levels equals higher pay and less rubbish. So generally speaking, a good idea to focus in on education, reduce that rubbish and increase not only the individual citizen's wealth, but also the wealth of your city. If you navigate to City Skylines 2 in your Steam library and then select properties, that will open up a menu. Inside of that menu, we'll be able to get access to developer mode, though it is a little bit intricate. The advice that I've seen requires a capital M on mode and also, crucially, a wee dash at the start there. Once you've got all of that in, you'll be good to roll. Once you're back in the game, you might think, oh man, I don't feel like a developer yet. 
I'm not responding to criticism to get criticized for responding to criticism. What's going on? Don't worry. Hit the tab key. This will open up a huge variety of options. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go into every single one of them here, though these display stats could be pretty interesting if you're looking to figure out exactly how quickly City Skylines is running. Likewise, simulation settings, the radio, the climate too. Feel like a bit of rain? Simply turn it on, baby! <laughs> Want a few clouds there too? Hey, no trouble. Want the rain to go away? Okay, rain gone. Easy as that. Obviously, there are a huge variety of options that you can do here, and they also include placing down things like individual items, plopping them down. Not just the trees that we can already do, but so much more. And as we take a look at the mighty poop lake in the middle of my city, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something new, even if it was just a little tip for those of you who are experts, or maybe for majority of the people who are probably watching this video as the targeted audience, you might have learned quite a few things as a relative beginner. Uh, either way, the comments section is usually a hive mind of wonderful things on these kinds of videos. People often share their own extra for experts, extensions of my tips, or completely different ones that aren't relevant to the video. So maybe check that out as well. I'll see you next time.